Hello everyone, Dynadon here with a uh, update on the War Corsair. Uh, this is pretty much the end of February. It's about 50 degrees outside. Nice day. Got a light wind blowing down the runway from the west. Uh, there's been planes running in and out of here uh, quite a bit. So my uh, mission today was to come down, pull the fuel tank so I can get access to the rudder pedals. Remember last year, the last thing I wanted to do was adjust the brakes. So I came down, crawled inside, unhooked the turnbuckles, picked the tank up, set it over to the side, got down in there and adjusted the pedals. <laughs> I didn't bother trying to record that because it's, it's a real pain in the butt to get in there and work. But once I get the tank lifted up out of the way, I'm at, at the pedals. It only took 10 minutes to adjust them. And then uh, turns out uh, the other thing I was looking to do was get this little box installed into the tailwheel motor drive assembly. Uh, this is a PWM uh, speed controller. So what I wanted to do is uh, slow down how fast that tailwheel retracts. When you flip the switch, that thing just goes snap, snap, up, down. It's way too fast and it jars everything. It's chain drive and it keeps wanting to pull the motor loose and slacken the chain because it hits so hard. So by using this, I can slow that thing down to a crawl. So, you know, I use this on my bench to show you how, how the system is going to work. But, um, so I was going to put this in too on the two relays that were behind the instrument panel. Once the tank's out, I have full access to the instrument panel. Well, it turns out those two relays are actually for the fuel pumps. One, there's two pumps in a tank and each relay operates pump. So pump one, pump two. So they're not in there. So I crawled up under the tail, I picked up the plane, set it on a chair, and then I got up in there and looked at the wiring on the, the micro switches in the tail. So essentially, this is the electric motor. You got your like positive and negative wires coming out. Well, they go to the what would be the normally closed side of the micro switches. This is the tab that the switch pushes. This is the common pin. This is your normally uh, open pin, normally closed pin. So on the normally closed pin, it comes out and it uh, splits and one goes to the mother and one goes forward and then the common wire comes out of the switches and goes forward. Same way with the up switch. Common wire goes up to the front and then the, um, the normally closed switch goes to uh, up front as well as to the motor. So, well it turns out this setup does not have uh, relays in it like I thought. Uh, so, I, I, I'm not exactly sure how I got it wired to make this work, but the, the switch on the landing gear switch itself it's a double pull double throw so it mean double double throw means uh, it switches down and it switches up two throws and the center pin is your common and I've checked that and that's actually hot 12 volt power in so when I flip this switch up right now the hot's going in and up and this is in the down position so this is getting power out which would go back to one of these motors and I'm sure since the gears down uh, the power probably comes into here and then uh, since the switch is pushed uh, it's opening up this normally closed side so power stops here won't go in but if the gear was up and you put the switch down the power should go through and it should turn the motor on through, uh, through one of these wires so I, I'm, I gotta go home and figure out how did I wire this thing up? There's only a couple configurations that you can do, but I, I thought for sure I had relays on this, like the mains. Uh, the left side of the switch, there's, again, I said it's a double pull, double throw. Double pull meaning there's two sets of switches, two banks of switches. There's a right side bank and a left side bank. So there's six pins on the back of that switch. The right side is strictly for the tail motor. The left side is for the hydraulics for the mains. So, so I, I don't know where to put this in. Uh, it's got to go in. All I got to do is find the power and ground that comes in, like this one here. I can cut this power that comes from the circuit breaker into here. I cut the power, run the power into this box, run the power out of this box, back into the uh, switch. <clears throat> All it's going to do is drop the voltage down. It's going to pulse it on and off is what it does. Pulses it on and off at a duty cycle of, you know, like 0% to 100% duty cycle. So about halfway you'd see about 
50% duty cycle, but it's still 12 volts, but it's 50% on, 50% off. And as you turn it up or down, it'll increase or decrease the on time versus the off time. And that's how you get the uh, motor to run slower. But it still sees a full 12 volts, it just sees it in pulses. So you, got, you still got high current flow and uh, straight voltage. So the other problem, like I said, I just, I'm just i going to have to go home and look at some of my drawings and that, try and figure out how I did this. Because basically, to make this motor go forwards or backwards, you have to reverse the leads. And that's done somehow through here. Well, on the outputs, like this is the uh, gear down. This is the downside. This is the upside. Because when a switch switches, it switches like this. Points. So this is pointing here, so the 12 volts would go in and go out these. Well, there's three wires on that pin, and there's three wires on this pin, and just a single hot coming in. So how it comes back into here, i, I got to scratch my head and figure it out. So I was not able to put this in today. So that's about all I can do today. Um, I do have the switch pulled out of the panel. There's no more relays back there. There's only the two relays. And here's the, the actual gear landing switch. You can see it's... At six pins. Like I said, this left side is strictly for the uh, hydraulics, and this right side you got one leg air, and then there's two sharing that one connector, and then I've got two over here, and the third one back here. There's so there's three wires on each of the up or down, and then just a single 12 volt hot coming in the middle. So that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, but uh, there's a, there is another pair of relays in here, but that's for the flaps. It has to I mean everything works, and on a reversing circuit, it takes two relays. But I'm not quite sure. Uh, what I did do is I pulled the um, connector on the hydraulic pump so it wouldn't work, and I flipped the switch up and down, and I can hear the relays clicking down over here that work the hydraulics. I can hear that switching, but I don't hear any other relays other than the one relay for the up. Uh, you won't hear the down relay because the gear is down and it's already uh, uh, clicked open so they won't it won't register because the, the, the switches in the landing gear is what turns the motors off uh, so so I got to figure out I'm, I'm, it's a head scratcher to me I can't I mean, I've done it so long ago I, I have a drawing at home off to look at and see if it uh, collaborates with what I can see physically in the plane. So, like the tail wheel assembly comes up, hits this switch, and that uh, opens the circuit. Because right now it's a normally closed switch. When the switch is just sitting there, it's closed. Hit that, opens up the circuit, kills the power. Same way with this one. This is the switch here. The gear, the gear kind of comes up, hits this switch, comes down, hits this switch. Uh, this is up, so this is in the tail, just like this. So this is the up switch and the down switch and then the motors you know wired in conjunction so that's where that is but I wanted to get that in and I can't because once I do that I can unplug the motor pick the tail up I can flip the switch and then adjust everything back there and get that tail wheel happy right now when I get back out and start testing I don't need to worry about the landing gear um, the first few flights several flights more than likely the gear is going to stay down I just have to keep the airspeed down on it so it's not too drastic uh, and then once I'm happy that the engine's not going to give me a problem I'm going to have to force land uh, it's best to keep the gear down until then and then after I get in some landings and uh, the engine everything proves to be sound and not going to give me any problems in here then I can uh, do the uh, gear up switch and what I'll do like I mentioned before I will probably take the gear doors off just to eliminate any problems with those um, and then I can cycle the gear up and down without any interference with the doors. Uh, my ultimate goal would be to get a GoPro on here somewhere so I can see what these doors are doing in flight uh, before I try to cycle them. The tail doors, not a big deal. Once I get this in there and start adjusting, I'll disconnect the, the doors, run the gear up and up and down, make sure the limit switches are good because I, I do have wire coming to add the uh, gear indicator light system. So I got some wire coming. I got to run one wire to each gear and then add a switch to each gear. And I've got the switches coming too. The wire should be here tomorrow. Switches should be any day. 
Um, but that's a project that doesn't have to be done before I can take this plane out and play with it. It's just something I want to add to the plane. But uh, right now I, I got the brakes adjusted all the way far forward as they'll go with the forks I have. Uh, and it feels pretty good. So now when I go in there and put my foot on the rudders, my bottom of my foot is actually hitting the rudder and I can relax my toes down. So when I'm pushing, I'm strictly pushing the pedals, rudder pedals now, and then I physically have to push the toe brakes to make them work. So I got them adjusted as far as they go. Just I, mean, I, I probably took um, about three quarter to three eighths of an inch is how far I was able to screw them down. And I th it gives me, I won't really know if it's good until I take it out and taxi it. And I'm, because I got it kind of tore apart up here, I'm not going to bother going out taxiing it. Uh, I didn't get done what I set out to do today. So uh, I just wanted to give you a little short update that lets you know that I am thinking about stuff. I am working on it. Uh, like I say, I got some new wire coming, switches coming to finish out the lights. I got to drill the panel. I got to make a little board at home to mount the lights in. So when I bring it down here, I can just stick it in the back of the panel and attach it. So, <clears throat> all right, well, I guess that's going to do it for this quick update. Just wanted to get, uh, get this going. This is uh, unseasonably warm weather for February in, you know, northwest Pennsylvania. Here's another plane. And just coming in. And the one over there, I think that's a Cirrus or something. Getting ready to go out. So, been pretty active. Alright folks, as always, feel free to leave any comments, questions, or concerns. Uh, I appreciate everyone taking the time to watch these videos and leaving comments and questions. I still have some people out there, oh, he's not doing nothing. He's just going to tinker with it forever. He's never going to fly it. And I was like, all right, I'm going to unsubscribe. I was like, okay, bye-bye. See you later. Don't let the door hit in the ass on the way out. But, uh, again, these videos are not intended for the general mass public. I appreciate you guys watching them. These were originally intended videos so people could see how I went about building this airplane. So when they go to build a certain model like this, they'll have a, an understanding of what they can do and maybe some differences that they can try. But there's, there was nothing out there when I was building this for me to, to go back in and look at. I mean, the internet didn't exist when I started this airplane. So I did a lot of time. Um, there wasn't really much research when the internet came out. So. That was my biggest problem. I had nothing or nobody to go by. So, all right, these guys are gonna make some noise out here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this off and uh, get this thing loaded up for you guys tonight. And uh, like I say, last this past Saturday, it was like 20 degrees all day, just miserably freezing cold. Sunday was a little better, 30s, but it was still pretty bad. It was sunny now, but today it's uh, 50, and uh, so it was warm enough to come down here and tinker. Um, I probably won't be able to get back down here till next weekend, and I think next weekend is still going to be a little, little warm enough so we can come down. If, once I, if I get this thing figured out, then I can figure out where to put that little box and get that in here. Meanwhile, I'm gonna, I need to add the extra micro switches to the system and, and uh, get that set up to plumb all that in. So. All right, folks, we're going to get under, under here, and uh, hopefully next weekend I'll have another update for you. Again, thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you on the next one.